Hello my soccer universe, how about that finish to Group C? Man, 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 man. Silver linings, this jersey is not a jersey that will be remembered for Messi's tears, at least for now, which makes me happy. And while uh, after the first half I thought, yeah, this will be one of those games that Argentina just do not win and then Saudi Arabia will score and out Argentina go. In the end, it was Argentina cruising. But whatever happened between Poland and Mexico, I mean, I cannot tell. This was edge of the seat stuff. And, you know, ahead of that game, if you would have asked me who would I like between those two to advance more, it was, it was already a really tough choice because I think both of them were not really, really good. But I thought that Poland probably a little bit more than Mexico who we were really not good uh, against our Argentina, you know, though they've had a little bit more initiative against Poland. So, you know, uh, but, you know, maybe a little bit more Poland. Uh, that went completely out of the window. I mean, Poland just hung on by the skin of their teeth. And I think they made it over the line with just the tooth dangling left. It was unbelievable. This came down to yellow cards. Almost. Because Saudi Arabia scored. Which would not have mattered because Mexico did three goals. Oh, what a finish. What a finish. What a, what a finish. And it's definitely even more uh, so, uh, you know, already the finish to Group D was not a bad one. Although the both games were not that exciting and uh, Denmark was a complete uh, disappointment. But what happened in Group C? I mean, and the I kind of saw it coming because, you know, with four teams advancing, uh, you don't know what you want, what, what you're going to get. In the end, I think the team that would have deserved most to, be able to move on is Saudi Arabia. And I told you that I think they will probably not make it. Uh, signs of India at the Asian Cup, that that will always stick in my memory. In any case... Um, Go, just quickly on Group D before we go into the uh, a, a review of the matches. I mean, I said it already in my short video. Australia advancing is something that was unfathomable to me. They scored more or less three goals from three shots. Yes, credit where credit is due. They stand solid on the back. Much better than most other teams. But I think it was more down to the weakness of their opponents. And I'm thinking here of Tunisia not playing Kazri uh, for the entirety of the match because they needed a little bit of uh, flair to actually score against Aus Australia. And Denmark, I think, shot themselves in the foot with getting too much uh, involved in off-field issues, namely armbands and so on. I, I actually really think that this is what in the end undid Dan Denmark, who are a really good side. However, it also has, as I mentioned, everyone says, yeah, they had this great run to the semifinals of the Euros. Uh, and I, I, I agree, it was a great emotional run. Everyone, all the hearts went out to Denmark. However, they went through the group because of the tiebreaker they've had they finished with three points they lost two games in the group then they played wales and the czech republic two teams that you would easily expect denmark to beat because they're just better so they had also a soft draw and then they failed obviously uh, close to england so um this has to be also put in perspective. I think uh, if you're a Denmark fan, you're definitely disappointed because everyone had you as the dark horse, but that was already kind of writing about. I had a feeling, and I, I said it once I put them in the semifinal in my prediction. I said, I actually, if you ask me, I feel that Denmark is not going that far. Yeah, shows how much, um, you know, my predictions I knew from the beginning are, are complete crap. I would say, Briefly three games, I mean, Australia-Denmark was one of those really odd ones because uh, Denmark, at least for the first 25-5 minutes, really showed that they are the individually better team and had some nice attacking moves and there were a few things going back, back and forth. But the longer the game went on, the uh, more dull their attack became and Australia could shore it up, had actually a few uh, ventures going forward themselves. 
Everyone expected Denmark to come out flying. It did not happen. And Matthew Lecky scores with a really nicely played counter-attack. The winner and Denmark could not find their way back. I wonder why uh, Yusuf Paulsen never played. That was for me the odd one. But overall, I really gotta say, I did not expect Denmark to not show anything at that end because it was a really haphazard and they just could not break down the tight defensive line for Australia. And as much as I've been railing against Australia, uh, for their star style play. Well, that's the only thing they could really do and they actually did it very, very well. So in the end, maybe they even deserved going on. Although I still think a Tunisia probably should have made it. A Tunisia team that scored early against France, albeit it was an offside. Uh, and against the France team also that I had many, many changes. Of course they did because it would have been really... It would have needed a major goal swing for France to lose the first place. So they really were kind of safe. And even the lineup they put out was not a bad lineup overall at all. Um, Tunisia gave it their all and tried. They actually get in the goal through Kazri. Uh, duh. I mean, let Kazri play and Kazri will score for you. He is the only uh, player in the squad, even if he's old, that has a little bit special at this moment for Tunisia. Uh, and it looked like at that point that uh, Tunisia even threw because it was still nil-nil between uh, Australia and Denmark, which I actually thought at this point it will probably end nil-nil. Yeah, Lecky shortly thereafter scored and then uh, turned, turned my prediction on its head. Funny thing is I was talking this morning in the office and, and I said, Australia, nah, I don't think they can win against Denmark. Um, but then And then I said, but having said that, they will now win 2-0 with two counter-attacks. Yeah, well, almost happened this way. So Tunisia needed a draw from Denmark that was not coming. And then even uh, Griezmann scored. And at first you thought, yeah, it's 1-1. One, one, and I almost had the result in there as 1-1. As one, one. But uh, Griezmann, when the ball was played, was offset. Yes, it came then off. He became active because he touched the ball. So I think it was all right to call this an offset, but it was one of the weird, the weird ones. Tunisia wins for the first time against a European opponent at the World Cup. Uh, that's a big one and a little bit credit on my shoulders. I thought that Tunisia will show up against France, against the weakened France squad. That is, but you know, at least, you know, you gotta uh, celebrate the victories that come. Celebrating the victories, Argentina beat Poland uh, and win the group with that, which was not in the, in, in the cards. But this has a teeny little bit, teeny little bit of Spain in 2010 also. Got to be said because they lost to Swiss, Swiss, Switzerland and then they also managed to win the group with that. So, you know, it's not the worst thing. Uh, there, there are more good omens. But first off, what's the Poland thinking? Do you remember yesterday's video? I said, don't be passive. Poland was super passive, super defensive. Lewandowski was hanging in the air. Argentina, every time the Poland got on the ball within a few uh, touches, Argentina was back on the ball, created chances. Messi had acres of space that he didn't space, that he didn't score was one of the miracles of the day, to be honest. And he had the big chance when uh, Jason in the, in the box flies over, hits Messi in the head. Found a little bit of a rough penalty, but I guess by the law it is covered. And Messi steps up and Jesse saves this penalty. And at that point I thought, this is one of those games they will. Similar to Italy, Germany at the Euro 96, where one team completely dominates but cannot find the breakthrough. Now, um, in the third group game, Campus in 78... Missed a penalty. Argentina became world champions. In 86, third group game, Maradona misses a penalty. Argentina becomes world champion. Third group game in Qatar, Messi misses a penalty. Omen? Maybe. That penalty penalty is by, by the way, by Camp Campus, they lost to Italy and did not finish first. So, just saying. They didn't, and in both cases, Argentina played Italy in the group stage, which they don't do this time. So, you know, it's not all perfect. The breakthrough came, McAllister, right after they have a great run from Molina. Uh, and then the Polish defense, who has a 6-2 advantage, just misses McAllister, who can choose his spot. Because Chesney has been 
This is the first goal that Poland conceded at this World Cup. Uh, Jason has been really probably the outstanding player of uh, Poland, probably the outstanding goalkeeper of the tournament. It's 1-0 Ar Argentina. And uh, since at the same time, almost, make, almost the same time, make, make almost good, you can see how tentative Poland got. Then you, ah, we're going to play this down. We can we still have the goal advantage? We don't want to concede more goals. And this was almost their downfall because, ah, uh, yes, click almost immediately after had the one chance for Poland. But then Argentina easily could have scored more than the one through Alvarez in 67th. This was Poland hanging on by the skin of their teeth. And then even when they brought Piontek on, I thought, yeah, okay, you have now two strikers up front. But really, who is going to give them the ball? It was so tactically odd by Poland from beginning to end that I did not understand what was going on there. I really did not under understand this. This was like Japan at the last World Cup, at the last 10 minutes, they decided, okay, let, let's keep the ball and let's hope that um, it falls our way with, Sen uh, with Senegal. But uh, I, I have to tell you, this was just a Wabonk uh, game because they were one goal away from being eliminated. Because at the same time, Mexico and Saudi so, 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 so Arabia, um, well, it was maybe a little bit of an op more open for first half advantage, make Mexico. Right after the half, uh, Martin and then a brilliant free kick from uh, Chavez gave Mexico a very quick 2 0 lead. Then I think Lozano had made it three uh, shortly thereafter, was called for offside. Later on, another offside goal. Mexico had quite a few chances. There was there were other two free figures. The goalie for South Saudi Arabia saved. It was so close. It was so close for Mexico. It was also so close that my Argentina scored another one. It was absolute madness how Poland just hung in there. Literally hung in there. But they get it over, over, over the line. And, the, and, and my favorite scene was when Saudi Arabia scores. Everyone, the Polish players, the Polish fans all say, yeah, 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 we made it. Realizing that, no, nothing has changed. If Mexico score another goal, we are still out. However, Mexico does not get that goal. And yeah, I don't really know what to think about uh, these two games. Overall, maybe it's the best that we look at the final standings in uh, groups C and D. Argentina win that group ahead of Poland, Mexico, Saudi Arabia. As I said, I actually think this from all those teams saw, the Arabia was probably the most entertaining. They finished last. Um, I even think that Tunisia should have been made it over Australia. But again, I really don't want to talk too much against the Aussies. A, I'm re I'm, part of me is really happy because of Australia, not because of how they played. And also, uh, you got to give it all they... They gave it all that they could and they did this very, 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 very well. So credit where credit is due. In the end, I think I mean, and even they scored three goals with how many little shots they had. So again, take it with a grain of salt. Well, what I'm saying, I think um, it's a major upset. Australia made it, and in the end, I think they did deserve it. Um, in the projected standings, again, uh, we have final group standings. You see a little bit more of the. Um, Pro, uh, the uh, pro probabilities go going on. Uh, you see, for instance, Argentina huge favorites over Australia and France, similar huge fav favorites over Poland. Uh, moving on, but we want to see, of course, the bracket where there's a little bit more uh, secure. We have Netherlands, United States, Argentina, Australia. We'll make one semi finalist. You would favor Argentina in that one big time. Although Argentina, Australia, there is some history there, and I think United States could also do something as the Netherlands. As much as I want to support Argentina and the Netherlands, which are my two teams uh, at, at this World Cup, and you know, only one can make it to the semifinals, which hurts a little bit. Part of me thinks it would be fun if the United States and Australia would play that quarter qu qu the quarterfinal. On the bottom, England, Senegal, France, Poland. Screams uh, like an England France quarterfinal. That's tasty. I gotta say, that's tasty. I I actually would like to see that now since France lost they lost a few points Argentina, Argentina, Argentina won Argentina looking it was definitely the best performance now Argentina are actually uh, in second place among the favorites uh, other than that not much has changed from yesterday except that they are, uh, of course because now teams are eliminated like Denmark did on, on the bottom things a little bit more moving around 
Final group games for tomorrow. We start first with Group F, Croatia, Belgium. Belgium has major troubles. The squad is not happy. Um, so, but I would expect that Croatia move on there. And then we have Canada against Morocco. Uh, last dance for Canada. Will they spoil Morocco's party? We'll see. And then we have the end to Group E between Japan and Spain and Costa Rica and Germany. Of course, of course, Costa Rica, Germany is a more of a more of a head to head. And also quite some permutations in there. So look, looking forward to these uh, as well. Although I think I'm already a little bit more going forward to the next day. But you know, we'll see. Also, will the Croatian super fan, the hottest fan, be arrested for barely wearing anything? Just that's another thing we have to worry about tomorrow. In any case, please. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a line below what you thought about the finish to this because it's just absolute madness. Absolute madness. And yeah, um, I will surely talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.